Hello one and all, and welcome to the return of the Superhero Chronicles. It's time to uh, bring this beast back, and we do bring it back with a bang as we cover what I consider to be the official launch of Marvel's you know, grand plan to take over the world of cinema. Now, of course, they started off with X-Men, and X-Men was a proven success. But the movie that really made Marvel the juggernaut that it would eventually become is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. The original Spider-Man. The first Spider-Man. With Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, Willem Dafoe, and of course, J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Um, let's make this, let's get started, let's make this quick. Um, I remember when I saw this movie when I was 12 years old. It came out in 2002. Directed by Sam Raimi. I don't know why I mentioned it, but whatever. But when I first saw this when I was 12 years old, I loved it. It was like, to me, it was like seeing, you know, the Batman of Marvel, essentially, in terms of popularity, you know, come to life for the first time. Because up until this, all you had was the animated series of Spider-Man from the 90s. And that was all I had for me personally. So when I saw this movie, I was like, <clears throat> So good seeing Spider-Man on screen. It was awesome seeing Spider-Man on screen. Because you got to remember, when Spider-Man came out, there was no superhero genre. You had the original four Batman movies. You had the original four Superman movies in terms of, like, theatrical box office smashes. But you had, like, a lot of, like, you know, duds in, in there also, like a Swamp Thing, which was a... But, you know, a good movie, but still, a, you know... To a mass audience, you know. Hmm. So, of course, then you had then you had ninety eight, which brought us Blade, which was the first and like official big release from Marvel, and that proved to be a success. And that, of course, led to X Men, which was the bigger success, which led to Spider Man, which was the granddaddy of the success. So, like Spider Man, to me, like like X Men was like the start, but to me, Spider Man is what elevated it to that next level and for a pretty damn good reason because this movie is really really good watching it now i mean yeah some of the effects are still dated some of the effects may come off of dated and you know have that and of course over the years <laughs> they've been accused of having that old like ps1 ps2 type effects but as a whole you know it follows the comic books to if about all the comics, the comic books fairly, fairly well, you know, like, you know, Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, you know, in some areas, he's really, really good. In other areas, he's just, you know, kind of generic and bland. I don't have a problem with Tobey Maguire, but watching it now, there are some, you know, spots in his performances are just like, Ugh. but I will say this, the man can do a crying scene. If you want to, if you want a dramatic scene that involves crying, Call Tobey Maguire, because I think he can cry on cue, which is outstanding. Uh, Kirsten Dust as Mary Jane. <sighs> I, didn't, I didn't care for it then, and I don't care for it now. She's not Mary Jane, and the way Mary Jane was written in this particular series of movies, it's not the Mary... This, this isn't the quick, the spitfire, like the, 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 wise, the, the, the wisecracker Mary Jane. This is like a superficial, still stuck in high school Mary Jane. Um, I guess you could say this first movie was the closest you got to what Mary Jane should be, I guess, in a way. Uh, how can I forget James Franco as Harry Osborn is actually, is actually, and Franco's actually good as Harry Osborn. And Franco and Maguire have a natural chemistry with one another. Uh, and, and, and it shows on film that, you know, you know Parker and Harry, they, I can... The way Maguire and Franco play the characters, I can believe that they're best friends and have been best friends from childhood because they have such a good, you know, chemistry with one another. So that was cool. Uh, I like, I like the um, uh, the stuff with Norman Osborn and the way he views Harry and the way he views Peter. Like Norman views Peter almost as like uh, the son he was wanted, and Harry is just like an afterthought. And there are scenes, there are, cer there are certain scenes, if you pay attention, you can see like, you know, the, you know, the seeds of jealousy that Harry, that Harry grows, you know, that Harry has towards Peter. And 
they're very nuanced and you got to pay attention but like those those seeds you know in the course of the other two movies grow into what would eventually happen so it's like attention to detail phenomenal well, let's keep on let's keep on so you know it covers everything from the basics you know uncle ben getting shot uh, uncle ben played by cliff, cliff robertson and a very good you know was pretty good and the whole scene between him and peter when you know he's dying is very sad very emotional and you know what uh, <laughs> i gotta i gotta tell you like it won't make you cry but it'll make you be like ah. Oh. And, you know, in the very few minutes of screen time they had together, I, you can see the relationship and that, you know, they do care for one another. And and I like the fact that when Peter blew up and his uncle, he, you know, obviously Peter didn't mean it. But, you know, in, you know, you know, when you're angry, you're angry and you say and you say things you don't mean. And when that person unexpectedly something bad happened, that person, you regret what you, and you regret what you say. And. I like that being like almost a catalyst for Peter to like come out of his thing and be like, you know what? I'm going to start helping people. And that is how he became Spider-Man. Spider-Man, of course, <laughs> the scene where he becomes Spider-Man is fucking awesome. He goes into this underground wrestling federation and he faces Bonesaw McGraw, played by the amazing, the awesome, the late, great, macho man, Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Dig it. And that scene was hilarious. Macho Man and Maguire, you could tell those two are having so much fun in that scene, and it really shows on screen. So that scene's an A plus for me. Uh, the montage of scenes where you see, you know, Peter as Spider Man is okay; it's pretty cool. Uh, but, but the two highlights of this movie to me are Willem Dafoe was the Green Goblin. Um, Willem Dafoe, when he's just playing Norman, Z Norman Osborn, is chilling. I mean. Very, very chilling, especially once the Green Goblin serum is in him, because it's almost like, uh, it's almost like, uh, like Harvey Dent, Two Face, in a way, where like you don't know what's what's going to happen. It's like when he when he's like regular Norman Osborn, I was like, is he Norman Osborn or is he or is he Green Goblin? And and the scenes where he's like he's like talking to the mask, and you hear and he hears like the Goblin's voice in his head. The way Defoe plays it is awesome. Like, Defoe is such a phenomenally amazing actor. To me, he's very underrated because the guy's so good. And he's so good at acting, at acting against himself, uh, essentially playing two different characters, but at the same time, it's all in the same character, which is very interesting, which is very cool. Of course, you know the Goblin costume. Yes, I hate it. I don't like it. I agree with everyone. It looks it looks like a Power Rangers villain and. That's a big gripe because if the villain looks cheesy, <laughs> and it's uh, it's gonna be very hard to take him seriously. And the Goblin did look cheesy in this movie, but um, thankfully, to Willem Dafoe's performance, you know, he managed to like, somewhat make it work. But there are also certain scenes where he just hammed it up, and it was fun, so much fun to watch him ham it up because Dafoe was so good. Especially the, the final fight scene between him and Spider-Man where it's just like no music playing. It just beat the shit out of each other. Really cool fight scene. But the star of this movie is J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Good God Jesus. No one, no one will ever replace J.K. as Jameson. J.K. Even in the new Spider-Man reboot coming up, when they eventually do introduce J.J., you got to bring in J.K. Simmons because there's no one. No one you can cast that will even come that will even come to a tenth of being better than J.K. Simmons. You're on drugs if you think anyone you cast is better than J.J. as better is better than J.K. Because J.K. the look, the voice, the mannerisms, the way the way he would talk and use the use words in his speech, spot on, straight on. Loved it. Not a not really a whole lot you can say about J.K. Simmons that hasn't been said before because just watch it and see for yourself just how awesome it is. And of course I didn't cover it, but you know, Sam Raimi's direction obviously is really, really good. Really, really excellent actually, because Sam Raimi's an excellent director. Uh there's a lot of cool shots that he uses. Some cool POV shots, like uh, when you first see Spider-Man swing. It starts off as a POV, and then the camera just swoops up. It's almost like a roller coaster. It's like it's like a cool visual. Like the camera starts off slow, then it rises up. 
Like you'll know what I'm, you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. I thought it was a pretty cool visual. So Sam Raimi, in terms of directing, spot on. Uh, David Cope's screenplay or co-written screenplay is cheesy because you know the dialogue in this movie is something that you would hear in a comic book. Again, superhero wasn't really a genre when Spider-Man came out, so no one really knew how to make a serious superhero movie yet until 2008 with The Dark Knight. But we're not there yet, so like. The dialogue can come across as both natural and cheesy and just like, ugh, all at the same time. But the actors do the best with what they got, which I cannot fault them. So, with all that said, I'm going to give Spider-Man 1 a solid 7 out of 10. It's still very enjoyable, still fun to watch after all these years, but, you know... I stick by with my criticisms, and they do drag the grade down. Just a, they, they do drag down the grade a little. They do drag down the grade, but it doesn't drag it to the point where it's like this movie is unwatchable because it's definitely not unwatchable. You can still watch this movie now and still have a great time with it, and that's the mark of good movies. A good movie can make you go back and go back and go back and never get bored of it. And I never get bored of watching Spider-Man One. I still like it. I still enjoy it, and I'll always enjoy it. And that's pretty much all I got to say about that. <clears throat> well, this has been the Superhero Chronicles. I am AJ Legend. Like, comment, subscribe. See you again next time.